Mr. Herke? No. So, you were driving down the highway after you left the, uh, the Green River Resort uh, retreat where you met a bunch of ministers who uh, were, you know, you, you, you were there for a period of time to get ideas and then you, you were driving down the highway and you saw a sign for Circus World Museum. Yeah. Did that inspire you? Well, well where are we beginning? At the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Begin where you're really like. Yeah, Pat, the, the, uh, I was under contract to a studio working in New York, and uh, they got a contract from the Protestant Council to produce a film for them. And it started in February of 63, and uh, it, um, I, I'd come up with a, with a very long script uh, uh, which I based on mostly on the book of Isaiah, but um, it was a, a lot of work, a lot of study and everything, and it wasn't quite what the steering committee, they were very sharp people, uh, wanted. And uh, they wanted something that didn't rely on language. It was a World's Fair and people come who, they, at least then, now we're talking about over 50 years ago, you know, and people, um, it, not everybody was learning English uh, at the time. And um, so this one person invited me to, on the steering committee to a retreat in Wisconsin. I'd never been on a retreat like this before. And I met a lot of church people, and some of them were very, you know, ultra kind of old-fashioned, but the others were very hip, were very uh, um, uh, um, free in their thinking. That was very, very stimulating. But then there were other things that brought about the film. Um, one, the artist, Ruhr, you, 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 who you probably know, a modern French artist, and he painted the faces of Christ in very bold um, outlines, like stained glass windows. And then he would paint the faces of clowns, or mimes, the white face, like in the movie. And the eyes were the same on the Christ, and, and so it occurred to me, you know. Plus the the fact that obviously uh, there was a very great film by Fellini uh, called La Strada. Do you remember it? The Highway. And, and that, of course, had a lot of a lot of uh, influenced me a lot, and and um, we had. I don't know, are 29 different denominations, the Protestant denominations plus the Greek Orthodox, who were the easiest, I found the easiest to get along with. But they, they, if you have ever tried to get 29 different denominations to agree, agree on something, you know, it, it, was, it, it was awful. So one of the ways to do it was just drop language. Don't have anybody say anything. A lot of Protestantism, particularly the more fundamentalist kind, is is very word oriented. It very and you take words away. It's like taking away there's no sermon. What, what do you build on? And so they were kind of stymied no language, and then of course when I came up with a title parable, I heard these ridiculous um, objections like, uh, rhymes with terrible, don't do it, you know. <laughs> that, was, that was one of them. 
<laughs> and and, and um, but anyway, it, it all got about, and it's amazing that it did because the commissioner at the fair wanted it out, and uh, we were talking about it a little bit before. That was Robert Moses. That was Robert Moses, yeah. And uh, oh, what uh, this minister out in Long Island was going to shoot the movie screen full of holes, and um, the Con, Con Ed in New York was. Guy wrote, and he, he was an executive, and he wrote, if you show the film, we'll shut off your electricity. For the and entire World's Fair, then. The film was reviewed, like in January of 64, we, we were cutting the film. You know, it, it wasn't finished, nobody saw it, and there was a big review of it in the magazine Christianity Today. You know, with a drawing of a clown with a bulbous nose and pom poms and a silly hat and a drunk looking donkey. And um, that was, um, uh, it, so there was a lot of things against it, including the producer, who once said to me, he wanted to make money on the film, that's all, and he said, um, I'm not taking a bath because of you, Forsberg. You know, and, uh, <laughs> so he was so, you know, he, so what I did, I got my revenge. I modeled the villain in the piece of Magnus after him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he ever caught on. <laughs> but that's the, it's had a, quite a history. And somehow it's held up. The film is ridiculous. I mean, nobody has a circus parade out in the woods. <laughs> Who's going to come to the circus? The squirrels? The, the skunks? The, the chipmunks? I, I mean, who's there? Nobody has an African dip out in the That's in a busy midway, you know? But somehow, it works. You know, somehow it, nobody has ever come and says, I, maybe they're thinking it, but nobody's ever <laughs> said in 50 years that it's, uh, you know, well, where is this place where, you know, circus parades just parade through the woods with nobody but the birds to look at them. Uh, and um, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of those things. And, and yet there's, um, Yes, it works, and it, I guess you know it. Uh, it's now in the uh, Library of Congress National Archives as being representative of American art and culture, and I'm glad of that because I don't think of it necessarily as, as a religious film, um, and I think of it as you know as something. A film should be something that brings something out of the viewer, something personal out of the viewer. You know, the Godfather may be mean something to me quite different from what it might mean to you. We you know, we both might like the film. The only other thing I might add is one the model I had was, I mean, the thing that I was working for, I was thinking of it being like a, um, a uh, silent film with that kind of a Buster Keaton, uh, Charlie Chaplin, Ricky Dicky music and, and, um, and with a deep subtext, you know? Does that answer anything? <laughs> yeah, let, now let's uh, discuss some of your points there. You mentioned Godfather, and you know Francis Ford Coppola, he, uh, he was inspired by yeah, your, your screen, which yeah, is your I voice. Yeah, he lifted something. Yeah. He lifted that screen bit. The, the, the horse in the bed sweater. scene, where the, the producer screams and shows Beverly Hills in the, you know, based on, on that scene. And um, Godspell, the director, you know, admitted, yeah. proclaimed that he was inspired by this. I, I wish I had thought of it. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, 
Jesus Christ Superstar obviously has uh, interpreted. Well, nobody, that. nobody. I I don't know why it, it broke some kind of a taboo. And doing a religious film that wasn't guys running around in bathrobes, you know, and and the the uh, um, it it broke. They were able to do things like they did with Jesus Christ Superstar, and it go to the point of implying a uh, um, a love relationship between Jesus and Mary Magdalene, which they do in that. That and then of course, uh, God spell, and I I think in apparently parable had a great part in breaking that taboo. I mean, Jesus doesn't always have to be shown with a golden halo, <laughs> kind of thing in a white robe, whatever. Um, Speaking of uh, movies that were inspired, uh, The Fisher King, 1991, which is a very popular film directed by Terry Gilliam of Monty Python. And um, the story is uh, obviously inspired by, uh, it's, it's about a, a radio shock jock who um, manipulates his audience and one of them goes out and commits a massacre and um, causes uh, Robin Williams' character to lose his mind. And, um, the despondent shock jock devotes himself to uh, carrying on the, the mission of this delusional homeless man <coughs> whose life he ruined directly from, uh, which is something about uh, finding the, the, uh, what the, uh, the, the cup, you know, that Jesus drank from. Anyway, so in 91, they're still um, closely inspired by, by your work. Um, now, what strikes me is um, going way back to when you were 10 years old. You, you'd like to draw. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, but that was a, uh, that was a, your father's church or something. When he came from that. Well, there, a, an artist named Warner mm -hmm. Salman in Chicago. Swedish name, by the way, like Forsberg, although he's Swedish Finnish, and you said, well, that's totally different. <laughs> but um, anyway, he, um, 1926, he um, came to the church that my dad would later serve, and uh, he was inspired to produce uh, a painting of Jesus, which has become the most reproduced image in history. It's what Jesus looks like to most of humanity. And um, he saw some of your childhood drawings and recommended you for a scholarship at the Art Institute. Yeah, they were, well, there was a board of education thing, yeah. You spent your Saturdays yeah. studying art while you were going to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, isn't it ironic that the man who would paint what Jesus looks like, you know, the most um, beautiful image of Jesus, he, 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 he discovered you. You know, before he had made his image, he goes on to do that, you know, about World War II, <coughs> soldiers carried a card with his image around the world. And then a few years later, 20 actually, you, um, you're the first to break, uh, to, to make a, a mocking image of Jesus as a clown. Well, what people would think of as mocking, you know. Has it ever occurred to you how remarkable that is, that that artist and your work um, are linked that way? It occurs to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. When, when I was doing Parable, um, the clown was the clown. I mean, I wasn't thinking of a... I didn't think of him as Jesus. He was just the clown. I had this. You have your script, you know. You I, that was all in there, and and um, and then you've got to approach it as though it's you know it's really happening. But it, the clown is a clown, and the puppeteer is a puppeteer or a marionette, and I'm not thinking of 
the subtext or, or what they really are, or what they symbolize, or there are allegories of such and such and so and so. Am I, am I clear? I, I, anyway, Allow the me. Salmon you mentioned, mm -hmm. it, it, it was, I realized it was, uh, you know, as a kid meeting this, um, this uh, man who turned out to be, to, to make this portrait and become a, a well-known artist himself, you know. And he was very encouraging to a little kid. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Good. Allow me to get controversial for a moment. In this, this era when cartoonists are killed for drawing uh, images of God. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the um, what that says about what you know your uh, courage in what you did. Yeah. That's all I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I mean, you, but so, let's get back to where I started. Circus no, Road. I, I'm oh. trying to oh. tie in this uh, about the, the image of God or Muhammad or whatever, uh, bringing about the death of a, what, what you know the the riots against the Danish newspaper. Or, um, how does that tie in? What? The contrast oh. between um, uh, between those uh, those people and yeah, it's, uh, now that's a point. I okay. never thought of that. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, Moses, uh, Commissioner Moses, Robert Moses. I mean, those people. Th that Moses, objecting the, the one who had real power. <laughs> but but it was the beginning of. Objecting to the notion of a of God or a great prophet or something being depicted as a in art, mm -hmm. either a painted image or a motion picture or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, to get patriotic, I think it shows the strength of America that um, that here uh, we can we can mock Jesus and God. The outrage was less then than what's happening now. It's like we're on the skids worldwide. In a lot of ways. <laughs> I didn't feel it was mocking at all. No. I didn't get that vibration from it. And also, it seemed to me he was more of a mime than a clown. Mm -hmm. So um, no, that's that's I what I get to. You. She she's saying uh, uh, the. The character of your uh, of your movie, he was more of a mime than a clown. Just as yeah, he's a yeah. Mm -hmm. The French was called meme. meme. That's what I meant about the the film uh, uh, Les Enfants du Paradis, mm -hmm. the Children of Paradise, where Jean Louis Barrault plays the meme, if you remember, in the film brilliantly. And I think it. The first hour or so of the film, because it runs about four hours. How did you come about to uh, cast this character as a mime? What? How, how did you did your decision to cut to cast uh, to portray the central character as a mime? How did you? Uh, I really don't know. I mean, <laughs> all these role, the film I just mentioned. Fellini's uh, La Strada, um, and uh, I mean these, you know. I originally do. I, I any of you are you familiar with uh, Saeed Jaffrey, who recently died? Anyone here ever see a film called um, Men Would Be King? The Man Who Would Be King. Remember Billy Fish? The little Gurkha guy who, who I, I, the, the, who has he's kind of a sidekick to Michael Caine and Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah, he had a he got a cult following with that. He's a brilliant actor, and I was going to, to, I I know Said. I've used him in other things, directed him in New York off Broadway, and and he. Um, 
Uh, oh, he, he's a very, you know, he was in everything. He was in Gandhi and he was in, in um, Passage to India and um, so, so, so many films. So, but anyway, he, I was going to cast him as a clown. And somehow on, on um, the internet it got, it, it, they say things about Parable and mention Saeed Jaffrey being in the film. I don't know how that got out, but he, um, I thought about it and Saeed is brilliant. He's a showy actor. And I had to realize, and it was hard, his ex-wife is in the film. She's the Indian lady who they, do any of you read her cookbooks? <laughs> I, I looked her up online and, and found her fascinating. Well, the reason I bring up, bring up this thing about Saeed is that he's too show, he was too showy. He would have been brilliant, but everybody would have gone out and said, gee, what a terrific actor he is. That guy, he was a great actor. The message, the, if that is a message, the, 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 the kind of film it is, it wouldn't have been had Saeed played, played the clown. So I got this rather unknown actor who is a part of a sort of a second string actor with the Second City Group in Chicago named Clarence Mitchell. And uh, he was perfect because he didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, yeah. he had the, his face looked right. He had the bone structure so his face looked right with the white, white uh, paint, uh, paint on him. He didn't try to be showy. He just did what he was directed to do. And that, that's what was needed. And it was very hard to tell Saeed, no, you're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, because it was a job and actors are always looking for jobs, you know, the, uh, for runs, uh, what you call it. I, another thing I um, might mention is that this, this came out in 1964, the very same year that Lyndon Johnson got through the Civil Rights Act. So that the whole African dip thing was much, much more shocking then than it is now. And America, at, at when, when, when Johnson got that put through, there were a lot of people that didn't like it. And they weren't all Southerners either. The very year of the fair, there was a terrible riot up in Harlem. And they, 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 there was, you could feel the hatred, uh, racial hatred going on in New York. If, uh, between like cab drivers, a black cab driver and a white, you know, if they were who goes first kind of thing. It, it, it was, so, so that had much more